Hi lovelies and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are returning. My name is Candy and today I wanted to film a January happy. So what went on in January that jumped out at me? So I'm going to be sharing sort of experiences and decks and books and things like that. Now normally when I do a happiest video I break it into categories like books and then decks but this time I want to do something slightly different because the first thing about January that really struck me was the fact that I've been doing loads and loads and loads of journaling. This is my latest journal. I'm not going to show inside because it's just writing and there's loads of personal things in there but in here there is a page for magic moments those moments in your practice where things happen and you think oh wow and I've got a whole page of those and I thought this would be nice to share so I'm probably going to be looking at this page of all the magic bits of January and sharing different things around that so it's going to be a little bit more jumbled around the magic moment. So the first magic moment I've got listed down here is to do with using these two decks. These are the two decks that I spilled over from Yule and working with the Dagda. So I had the most wonderful time in Yule with my Yule altar. I worked with, um, worked with the Dagda, bringing in that sort of masculine, divine masculine into my practice more. There were loads of coincidences across the month that really pointed to my practice needing more of that to develop an internal masculine energy and um, working with the Dagda is my way of touching base with that. So this is quite a new oracle to me and I really enjoyed working with this of course the Dagda is linked with the Morrigan in Celtic mythology my crow decks are kind of for that sort of work with Celtic deity the Morrigan and with working with the Celtic pantheon so this was perfect and I paired it with the deck that's in here which is my Celtic wisdom tarot which I am sorry this one is out of print currently I managed to find it at a kind of reasonable price I paid less than I think I, I paid less than 30 pounds for this one online it did take a few decks coming becoming available before I got one at a price that I could justify uh, it's a beautiful deck if you are interested in the Celtic Celtic pantheon it goes through the stories of the gods and the goddesses you've got a sheila and a gig in there as well which I love um yeah it's a great deck and these two they worked absolutely beautifully together I will show you some pictures here but my magic moment around this is the first time I tried to put the crow oracle together with the tarot wondering whether it would work or not I poured a tarot spread and then I pulled my very first oracle card to go with the tarot and I pulled the abundance card and this is magical because I work with the Dagda because the character of the Dagda is all about that idea of abundance he has the cauldron of plenty where everybody is satisfied when they go to the cauldron for me the Dagda is a lovely energy for your time because it feels very similar to a sort of father christmas kind of energy to me it's the good father the good god the loving father the father that gives and not the father that takes which is perfect masculine energy for me to start to work with so abundance i would say is the key word that i associate with the dagda so to pull this card the very first card pull it was like the two decks were saying yes work with us together it was just wonderful the next magical thing i noticed was stalker cards coming out the shaper card and the protector again this is very much like a sort of good father card and these cards came out again and again and again and that always makes me sit up and take notice as well so these were two key cards for me and magic moments for the start of January and I just 
thought they were wonderful cards to work with. I then shifted from those two decks to another pairing, the Somnia Tarot and Into the Lonely Woods. I chose these because my mood and my experiences through December, Christmas time, I think it's always a little bit tricky if you're on your own, especially if you're a family scapegoat and you know that other family members are meeting up. It can get pretty tough at times and there was an air of loneliness which did spill into the new year as well and I just wanted to work with something that would touch on that theme of loneliness and these are my go-to this is Into the Lonely Woods uh, Lucy Cavendish and Dan May Oracle deck and Somnia Tarot this is the photographic version of the Somnia so there's something about this pairing which is just so so magical you can see here some of the pictures of the cards that I actually pulled you wouldn't necessarily think that these two decks would work together Into the Lonely Woods has a much more sort of children's storybook vibe about it whereas the Somnia is quite bleak and cold I think but there is a magic that happens when you put the two together. Firstly, I think there's something about the colour. The colours somehow work so well together. And then there are synchronicities that you can find within the artwork. It's a strange thing because normally styles go together, but these are different styles. But look here, you've got the, the gold and the fire colours and you've got on this one look at something hanging down from the top that always seems to be some sort of synchronicity to join the dots with and of course the messages that the cards bring when combined again i think it's just been a spectacular pairing uh, and i love it and the magic moments continued with my very first oracle pull from into the lonely woods which is this card drink from your own well water your own garden uh, it speaks about the need to be self-sufficient in your own well-being to find ways to nourish yourself but it also talks about whose cauldron are you going to and it just felt so magical having just put the decks away that were directly related to the Dagda and the Cauldron of Abundance to then pull a card that talked about going to the Cauldron it just felt like the Dagda was reaching across into other decks as well which I suppose is how our deity work should feel it should feel inherent within everything that the deity that we work with can come and meet us where we're at through the tools we're working with and I really did feel like the Dagda stepped across into these decks as well and it was just really comforting at a time when I did feel lonely and just a magic moment and talking about stalker cards again as a magical moment the Hierophant from the Somnia Tarot now in the first tarot spread I did in January with this deck this card I thought dropped out now the way I shuffle I will riffle shuffle seven times or more possibly always at least seven times when I feel like the deck is properly riffle shuffled I'll cut the deck to tell the deck that I'm ready and then I read jumpers I overhand until jumpers come out now I do that I think because I am um, an animist and I do believe that each deck holds its own voice its own energy its own spirit and I like to work with the deck and allow the deck a chance to throw its own voice in and I think allowing the deck to throw out a jumper or a card sticking out at a funny angle it that for me feels like I'm working with the deck and the voice of the deck so sometimes when I'm overhand shuffling a card will drop and if I think I've just dropped 
at it, then I will always look at it and put it back into the deck. And that happened on my first tarot spread with this deck in January, and it was the Hierophant card that dropped. So I put it back in the deck and carried on over hand shuffling, and another one dropped. And again, I wasn't sure whether it was me dropping it. I looked again, and it was the Hierophant again, but I still wasn't sure. So I smiled and put it back in, and another one dropped it was the Hierophant for the third time and I cannot tell you how many times that happens when I put cards back in that I think I've dropped it happens more times than it doesn't and I always trust the deck that if it wasn't me dropping it the first time and it was the card meant for me that it will come out a second time or a third time has happened with this card and it's always so magical I think when that happens it allows me to sit back and just be in wonder at how magical a tarot practice can be. Also my advice card in that very first spread was the King of Swords and I always really sit up just a little bit straighter when the king of swords comes out because it's a really important card to me it was the very first card i think in tarot that i really self-identified a particular time in my life about i i always call the king of swords my divorce energy card where you have to leave all emotion at the door and just bring truth and facts uh, and that's what it felt like stepping into divorce court. So the first time I read a, a detailed description of the energy of the King of Swords, I just recognised it so much from those four hellish years of my life. Um, also, in the Hallow Quest, the meditation around the Sword King that I did was the most incredible meditation I've ever done that spilled over into three or four meditations it spilled over into signs in real life it was incredible one of the aspects of that meditation was watching me become the king of swords and watching the king of swords develop this sort of all body armor that dissolved into my skin and became like a layer of armor just beneath the skin and to be honest, it feels like it never left that layer of armour and it can be activated at any point. It was the most incredible thing. Um, so whenever I see the King of Swords, I think of that layer of armour being activated. However, something weird happened. We're in the Year of the Dragon. From last year, the call of the dragon has been calling and calling and calling very insistently. And through January as well, sort of dragon energy, it just keeps whispering to me in the back of my mind. And when this card came out as advice, a little whisper went to went in my head, yeah, but is it dragon armor now? Is it dragon scales? And I sat there with this image of my King of Swords armour just beneath the skin being dragon scales. And it was just amazing. After that reading, I went downstairs to grab half an hour to read a book that I was finishing. Can you see this is where I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but stay with me because this was really a big magic moment for January. So in January, let's just talk about the books. I read these two, which are the last two books in the Grisha verse series of books by Lee Bardugo. These books, to say that I cried when I finished the last book because I was done with the series is an understatement because these books are just my all-time favourite series of books. I absolutely love them. Um, so how does this fit in with The King of Swords? Well, in the final book, it might have been this one or was it in this one? It was in one of these two books. One of the key characters meets one of the gods and she has to kill the god to take his power with his permission which she does, but that god is in the shape of a dragon. And when she kills the dragon, 
she watches the scales form just below the surface of her skin and fade in. And that is the passage of the book that I sat down to read literally five minutes after I'd pulled this card and had had that thought. And to say that I sat there completely gobsmacked was an understatement. I've never had that happen before where, where a fiction book will key into a tarot reading and make a connection and give me an aha moment and just speak really profoundly of something else going on. And it has happened a few times in January. I am beginning to realise that our spiritual path connections can be made anywhere. It can be made on a nature walk. It can be made watching a movie. It can be made reading a fiction book. And it was made for me reading these two books around this card and the image of armour under the skin. So at that point I put my book down and sat there in awe thinking wow I need to really pay attention to to dragons and this call to dragon energy and I put my book down and sat there and said out loud oh, I need to get some more dragon decks. I really I need to look at the Ashen Embers deck because I know that's a UK based deck with dragons and I sat there thinking I'm going to have to get it I'm just going to have to get that deck as I thought that thought I haven't finished yet with my magic moment the dogs started barking and the postman had arrived I went out to get the post on the porch and sitting in the porch was a belated box from my friend Shannon who had sent me my birthday and Christmas presents in a box I opened it up absolutely gobsmacked. I wasn't expecting anything. And what was in there? Smoke, ash and embers. All of that from the tarot card pull to reading about the dragon scales in the book and then opening this deck after declaring to the universe, I need this deck. Was it within the space of an hour? And it was just one thing after another. And it just completely completely gobsmacked me so I now have this deck waiting to be worked with I haven't worked with it yet um but I I just couldn't believe it I just sat there thinking this is the most incredible coincidence and I think that connecting of the dots and paying attention to things like that it's where it's not only where magic lies it's where like my art ideas lie there is such a magic or path to be found in connecting dots like this in our everyday um, and that was just an astounding one so from the somnia and into the lonely woods to reading at the lee bardugo books to a gift coming it was just incredible so that is my dragon magical moments. So while I've got the Grisha verse books out, let me talk about these books as well, because if you haven't read any of them, I am so jealous because I would do anything to be able to go back and read these for the first time. Let me show you what books are in the series. So the first three books in the series, it starts with Shadow and Bone, which of course was a Netflix series. So the Shadow and Bone, and there is Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising. Those are the first three books in the series, which kind of are standalone in their own right. Just amazing books. I read these last year. Um, in December, I did a reread of these because these two books were actually the first books of the whole series I ever read. I started with Six of Crows and then followed it with Crooked Kingdom and I've reread these in December because these two books out of the whole series are the books that if you can only read two read these two these books are incredible these books kind of play around the Shadow and Bone series the characters cross over as well but these two stand as standalone as well if you could only read two this is probably my all-time favourite book. It's also my daughter's all-time favourite book as well. So at the end of December, I'd just done a reread of these, which meant that I was left 
with just the final two which kind of loops back round to the characters in um, the Shadow and Bone series and the next one is King of Scars and it finishes with Rule of Wolves and oh my gosh it's just magical reading so that was my reading during November, December and January all lost in the Grisha verse and it was just amazing but now I want to talk about oh a, a deck that as I was using it throughout January it's probably the deck that I used the most in January I declared out to the universe time and time again over and over without me even realizing I was about to say it that wow this is my all-time favorite deck I have absolutely loved working with this deck. Now this was a Christmas present to myself. I managed to find the Mysteries of Mary Tarot deck second hand at an affordable price. It was still expensive but it was slightly more affordable from a UK seller so I had no delivery, I had no shipping and I worked with it in January with the vessel oracle oh my gosh these two decks together have been beautiful and this deck was stunning and again with this deck i pulled the good father and the servant of roses which is uh, depicting mary's father in the card both of these talk about developing um like connections with masculine energy the good father card has got oak leaves on this links to the oak tree and again i felt the call of the dagda reaching across yet again into another deck of course the dagda is linked to the oak tree and it's called the good god and it just there were lots and lots of calls for me in january to keep a hand held with the dagda and to look at ways of bringing more masculine energy into my internal world and it was just a theme that repeated over and over and over again especially with these two cards especially with this card which i pulled the four of distaff which has a spinning wheel on which links to the fairy tale of sleeping beauty of course the four of distaff or the four of swords is about that rest that hundred years sleep if you will this card was a really important pull for me in January and it links with a card in Chris Ann's Curious Creatures Tarot because I used this deck to pull my year ahead spread. My card for January was the Tower and oh boy did the Tower raise its head for me in January with some quite serious call to action for health concerns and things going dramatically wrong for me in January which is personal which I won't get into but let's just say that it was a wake-up call and I was lost for a lot of January in really extreme health concerns and like regular appointments at the doctors so i really did feel the tower come crashing down personally in january around the idea of the tower coming crashing down and the constant call of the dagda and a call to ma masculine energy this card got pulled which talked about becoming your own little prince inside not actually waiting for the prince to come and knock the thorn hedge down and to come and wake you up but you saving yourself by developing that masculine energy inside of you it talks of birthing the little prince in your own psyche and i just couldn't believe that it was yet again the same message a wake-up call if you will to step into the masculine energy of action to actually start doing something about these problems that in January really did bring the tower crashing down it was one of those moments where I was pushed out of denial and into immediate urgent action it was quite a way to birth the little prince inside, I have to say. Then this card 
on the day that it all happened was such a important card and message for me talk about tarot practice being really useful and really practical but also really magical the next day i pulled a, another spinning wheel from the deck this one the wheel of fortune and a, this in this card it talks about if the towers come crashing down then this too will pass and I also brought the three, pulled the three of swords, the three of distaff, which again looks at, talks about looking at your decisions and your actions through the lens of your heart. And seeing as my heart health is impacted on this journey with the tower crashing down, again, practical gobsmacking and magical cards to pull. Now I said that I was working with the vessel alongside it and I'll show you some pictures of the readings that I did pull between these two decks. Oh, these two decks were just incredible together and I really did pull some messages that were so clear in January. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous little deck. I, I really love this one. Um, again, magical these are the backs just an incredible time with tarot so again these two different styles have worked beautifully there's been lots of synchronicities look like here look you've got a hand mirror and a hand mirror there that sort of thing happened all the time but i picked the oracle deck because it's called the vessel and that idea of the sacred feminine being like a receiving energy it makes me smile now that at the end of the month, the call was not to sit in receiving energy, but to step in to a more active, action-based energy of the prince of your psyche or the divine masculine. It, but it was just such an interesting two decks to work with all of those concepts. So having worked all through January with the Mysteries of Mary. It did make me think at times I'm going to carry on working with this and I'm also going to bring into play my other Mother Mary oracle which kind of has almost like a prayer on the back and I thought to myself more than once in January oh my gosh I need to possibly put a prayer practice in place and um, I know that when I bought the Mysteries of Mary deck it came with its own rosary it came with this little black rosary which I love which has actually been hanging up on my Morrigan picture frame with my um, Celtic deity artwork in and it's looked lovely against and it. And then my uh, one of my friends messaged me who knows that I've been going through this sort of health crisis and said to me I don't normally tell people what they should do for their spiritual practice but I'm making an exception because I just need to tell you I think you should start praying the rosary what on earth she then sent me a recommendation for a book which i bought so this was a book that i bought in january which i've just started reading i'm that far through it the way of the rose the radical path of the divine feminine hidden in the rosary so this is another coincidence in january which was incredible in fact it's been a bit of a month for sort of mary study so Mother Mary through the rosary book and through the deck, but also Mary Magdalene. I reread in January The Quest for Mary Magdalene. This is by uh, Michael Haig. Uh, it's the history and legend of Mary Magdalene. And I just love this book. It's my secondary read. There's so much in here. It's incredible. But what this book did do, it's reminded me that the name Mary Magdalene means tower and to be in a tower month and to suddenly remember that and to have such a call to both Marys in January again that seemed that seemed very apt and also when I re-picked up the Hallow Quest as well I'm still working 
through lesson 20, which is just taking me months, but that's about visiting the tower. So there were towers everywhere in January. Another new book that I bought in as well, after reading this, I got really fascinated and just have to find out more about the Gnostic Gospels. So I haven't started this book yet, but this was a book that I bought in in January as well. Okay, scooting back round to these two decks, I want to talk about a person on YouTube, in Tarot Tube. I want to talk about Rumour, Rumour Haven, whose channel I'll link below. She did a video where she used these two decks and also had a similar experience with them, the, how magical they are together. And she talked about pulling two cards with very similar imagery and how it blew her away. I'll link that video down below. That was one of my favourite watches in January. I loved it. And I loved seeing somebody else have a similar experience with decks to the experience that I'm having, like how well these two decks go together. So it was really, really lovely to see. But I also want to talk about rumour because I have had quite the month in January, spending time with Ruma and her work. So if you didn't know, Ruma is actually a writer. And oh my gosh, I have had the nicest time that ever reading these. Now, she didn't know I was reading these. These aren't gifts. I bought all of these books with my own money. So don't think I'm just talking about this because Rumour wants me to. She doesn't even know I'm going to do this. So these were all bought with my own money. So I started off with What the Clock Knows. And I immediately realised that Rumour is fantastic at writing about different times and times that kind of run parallel but they're different so different time eras and they've got a kind of supernatural well this one has a real supernatural sort of gothic cemetery vibe to it there are lots of scenes wandering around getting messages from graves which is totally my cup of tea i can see how rumor loves buffy the vampire slayer it, it's inherent in the vibe and the feel of this story, which follows a character called Margot who's just split up with her boyfriend. Heartbroken, she moves to London and she's living opposite a cemetery in a haunted house where she connects with a spirit of somebody else. I'm not going to give it all away. It just was a fabulous read. I absolutely loved it. That was the middle of January I spent with this book. Then I moved on to reading Myths, Mothers and Mystics. Now this is a book of short stories and I loved it. There are stories that are set in a future time where motherhood and being pregnant, it makes your skin crawl with how easily we could get to the state of that story. There are mystics and stories about tarot readers set in the desert which is just wonderful. In the stories set in the myth section we see again Rumour's ability to play with time in her storylines and to connect something from past events to current events in like a supernatural way. It's just really good reads. The one, that, the read that I loved the most, I have to say in this book, was the very last entry in the book, which is actually a keynote speech. So Rumour was invited in 2017 to give the keynote speech at Upstate 8 Literary Festival in Illinois and she includes that keynote speech in the back and I loved that. It made me laugh out loud and she describes in there the nature of writing and creating and it just really, really struck a chord with me. And she talks about being in the flow and not planning her projects out like step by step meticulously, but allowing for more of a flow state when she's writing a story. 
and she goes on to say it allows for those odd and wonderful moments of pure writing magic when it's almost like the characters are whispering the next scenes into your ear as if the story already exists on some level independent of you but you've been chosen to tell it when this happens it's a little haunting but so amazing and i think that's just the most eloquent way i've ever read of the creativity process because i've often said with visual art there is a point where the art takes over and starts to whisper in your ear like a haunting and then you just have to follow the voice and i loved it i just recognized that moment so clearly in that writing so this was wonderful as well now i have um got about a third of a way through coattails and cocktails which i dropped on the floor on the way to the car because i've been reading it on the school run so my copy is a bit mushed up because it landed in mud and i was really cross this is more of a murder mystery i think this is turning into and again it's lovely and on the feel of these books they're just so lovely so i've got to finish this this month but it was just so lovely to spend a month with a creative genius of tarot tube so rumor i loved every minute of this i've got this book to finish i've got another book downstairs of yours as well so i'm just having the best time spending time with rumors creativity and it's wonderful so what else did i do in january i worked with these two decks i did some weekend spreads with these two now these two are absolutely gorgeous together this was a christmas present to myself last year this i'd had for a while hidden in my bag of shame which i opened last year i put them together they were stunning let me show you what they look like together so even the backs look the backs have got this sort of similar purple hue everything about these decks kind of feels like they match the feel of the cardstock is the same the sort of use of the purple is is prevalent throughout just the color palette as well they both look as well like they could be images directly out of a children's storybook so the style stylistically visually aesthetically they're perfect but also the messages. It's just been a really sort of gentle feel of a deck combo to me. This is my all time favourite Three of Cups. That girl in the pink jumper on the left looks so like Tilly. And Tilly's card is the Three of Cups because she is such a social girl. And it's just so lovely to see Tilly in a Three of Cups. Okay, a really important part of my practice in January was trying to connect more with the moon as well because I think I've been in a state of panic with my health, real, real anxiety. I have been taking moments to do quiet things, quiet things where it's just a time to breathe and I have been spending when the weather allows time at night when the sun's gone down and the moon's out to sit on my patio and just spend five minutes looking at the moon filming the moon photographing the moon because for me the moon always makes me feel really centered and really grounded <laughs> so because of that i have been working with my moon oracle again in january really keeping a close eye on moon dates and i've been working on a project which i'm going to bring to you really soon hopefully around moon dates which i hope you're going to love um, around those moon dates as well i have used these two decks so these have been constantly out now this is the moon journal deck this is like a little indie deck that i found on uk etsy which is just the moon phases on the back so there's a card for each moon phase 
and then it's all done with swans and of course if you've been on my channel for half a second you'll know that the swan is a really important animal for me it's one of the energies i love to work with it's linked to bridget as well which we've just had in milk so it's just fantastic to have out and i've just been changing this card over for every moon phase and so really keeping a close eye on dates which in the past i've tried to do but i've forgotten and then for each moon phase i've pulled a card from the earthly souls and spirits oracle which of course has these amazing moon backs or my version does this is the original indie version um and it's just been lovely to just have that key word for each moon phase, um, which I've been doing something with, which again, I won't talk about just yet because I want to bring the project as a complete project to you. But those two decks have been wonderful in January too. So around Imolk, I did some Imolk videos for you guys, which I've really loved. Um, and I did some more grimoire pages. So it's been really nice in January to, um, to do a little bit more art. Now, this more art came about simply because in January I was decluttering for Imolk and I decided to focus just on one room. So my conservatory art studio, which gets to be such a mess so i decided just to tidy that room let me show you the pictures so every january my conservatory looks like this and yes this is very shame inducing to show you this but i often store things in here over winter because it's too cold to use this room and i have to make room for the christmas tree in the lounge so things just get thrown in here the dogs come out here and mess about hence all the rug turned up and cushions on the floor it's always a mess but this year I suddenly realized that's why I don't do any art over the winter it's too cold out here it's too messy it becomes like a storage room so in January what I did not only did I tidy the conservatory but I made this art desk space in the lounge for myself and I love it somewhere to work that's warm so with that new setup in the lounge where it was warm I then just managed to do some grimoire pages so I did this one and then just before email kit I did a Bridget page so this is the double page here like I said in the video it is an interactive page. That is Imolk Island in the water, which I've called it Imolk Island. And there was magic stepping stones for me to walk onto the island in, a, in path working to sit and chat with Bridget. And I just loved doing this so much. As part of my Imolk ce celebrations, I've also been wearing this turquoise last few weeks and I've loved it. That's been really special to wear. These cages are brilliant being able to swap crystals over i've really loved it um for magic oil i've gone from night queen which i wear for the morrigan to patchouli oil now this these are the dream spirit oils they're about eight pound a bottle and they come with a roller ball on and they're just really lovely smells and oils to work with i think the patchouli i link patchouli again to the dagda so i started wearing patchouli again over yule and i've carried it on into january because of course the dagda has been holding my hand all the way through january not wanting to let go until he handed me over to bridget i feel for february so that's been really special to be wearing patchouli again every day which is lovely just when Ever I feel in the day just to draw a pentagram on my wrist with it and oh it's gorgeous gorgeous smell so I've also wanted to do adventures through the year for me and the kids and Busby was off at sleepovers he's such a social butterfly and I use the word butterfly because while he was off being a social butterfly me and the girls went to the butterfly farm at Stratford which was so magical. So this place is right by the river in the middle of Stratford 
and it was just a magical morning. All three of us absolutely loved it. Some of these butterflies are absolutely huge and they are so beautiful. They also let Poppy photograph some of their collection of dead butterflies for an art project. They even gave her some butterflies to bring home. Oh you can God. hear me it gasping at the place. I think I was the biggest kid in there, but it was just incredible i bought the girls butterfly books till he had some butterfly slides and we just had a wonderful wonderful morning so it's set in the biggest room around this gorgeous pond and water feature and the way i'm exclaiming about everything you would think i've never seen fish before but there you go that it was just really exciting to be in here the last time we came gosh the kids were so little uh, look at this all, all of the the butterfly chrysalis hanging up i loved this i thought that was incredible to see as well so that was a really stunning adventure with butterflies that just took our breath away we found out that some of the blue on the butterflies you don't they're not actually blue they're brown but our brain tricks us so we find out some facts and i walked around the garden i love this garden and i love these sculptural tubes that you get to walk through as well it's a beautiful garden setting as well which got me all excited with the thought of spring just around the corner ready to start planning my garden again so it was just a beautiful morning out so that was really really special in january while i was there i picked up a butterfly snow globe for my snow globe collection it says stratford upon avon butterfly farm i keep this next to my bed and when i feel like i can't do some of the challenges i'm up against i just give this a shake and remind myself transformation is possible as long as i keep birthing that little prince energy inside of myself into action so that's been lovely next to my bed as well in january so is there anything else left i did buy one new tarot deck in january i was watching if somebody's oh, i can't remember whose video it was but they were showing an indie deck and th they were saying that it's very like the urban tarot and i wasn't interested in the indie deck but it reminded me of this deck which had been on my wish list for forever and i just thought oh my gosh the urban tarot i'd forgotten about it and i went online and had a little look and just fell hook line and sinker for it so i ordered it and it came in and oh my gosh i mean look at that I think that's my favourite card in there. Of course, it's thoth based, but oh, I love, I love it. I've done one spread with this in January and loved it. Um, it, it makes me want to do a thoth, thoth study this year, which wasn't planned. I wasn't planning to do anything like that this year, but I would love to see this deck worked with the actual thoth deck. And I think I might look at it. It's brilliant. So the backs look like this. I, I've, I've loved this. Like I said, I've only done one spread with it so far. Um, it is one that I keep pulling out to flick through because I think the art's stunning in it. So the Urban Tarot, that was my one deck purchase for January. Also, I've had to bring you into my downstairs spare room where I'm beginning to make dragon worlds on the top of the dolls' houses. I'm loving these dolls' houses so much. But if I pan round to the piano, I've got some cupboards, 
here that I bought for, they were reduced from £70 down to £4 because it was water damaged, which I want to turn into a house for my little strawberry doll. If you follow me on my doll channel, you'll know that she's the little dolly that was in the advent calendar opening. But I brought you in here because I want to show you what's on the Barbie boat at the moment. She won't stay there, but she's just put there for now. Now, this is some happy mail that I got sent from one of you lovely lot, Penny. Thank you so much. I love her so, so much. Now, Penny, um, we sometimes chat on Instagram and she sent me, now this is a paper doll from Sarah Jane Art Magic. Now, Sarah Jane's got a YouTube channel and I just found her so the the coincidence is amazing in fact it might not even have been a coincidence it might have been penny that that gave me a heads up I'm, I'm not sure i think it might have been a coincidence but anyway penny makes these characters these paper doll characters so i oh my gosh i couldn't believe so it. what you get is you get a doll and all the clothes that are laminated to cut out you get a little bit of blue tack as well and then you get her little house where you can use as like a wardrobe to store and you can dress and you come up with stories and I know that Sarah Jane on her art channel she uses these dolls kind of in like a magical way um, and I am so so excited so you can see that So Nightingale is very high priestess energy she's very mystical in touch with her spiritual self Sarah Jane has videos about the the characters of these dolls on her channel as well. I know that she also has a Patreon where you can get these dolls. <laughs> oh my God, I am so excited to find a way to use this in my practice. So that was just so exciting in January. And I might even let, so Nightingale had a boat as a house because High Priestess, water, in touch with your spiritual side, possibly. I might give her the boat. I might give her the boat. Yeah, I might just give her the boat to live on. So that's it, guys, for January. It has been a hell of a month. It's been, I think, a quite scary month for me as well let's see what february brings the tower card is now away my card for this month is justice weighing scales facing up to facts bringing truth i already know where this is going so anyway guys it's been a hell of a month so thank you so much for being here if you're still here then well done and thank you i really appreciate it if you have enjoyed that do give me a like subscribe if you haven't because that really helps the channel out um, i've loved sharing that with you and i will see you next time bye